three months. That's how long my verification took when I first signed up to sell on Amazon. You can still feel the pain. In this video, I will be showing you step by step exactly how to open your own Amazon seller account while avoiding all of those pitfalls so you don't end up like me. If this does fast track your verification, please click that like button. Also, this is just the first step, so why not subscribe? Notifications on so you don't miss the next ones. But let's sign up. Now, before we start, it is very important I make a distinction. Anytime I say business, I am referring to your overall operation, whether you're running this as an individual or as a company. I'm just talking about your overall business, what you're doing. But when I say company, I'm specifically referring to those of you who are setting up a company, a corporation, maybe an LLC. You're running your business through that. So these words are not interchangeable. Step one, select your Amazon accepted entity. You must ensure that you're signing up with an entity that's accepted by that Amazon marketplace. And an entity is either an individual like you. This is when you yourself personally own the business. There's no additional corporation or other entity owning it. But if your entity you're signing up to Amazon with is you yourself, then of course you would sign up in your own personal name. The other type of entity is a company. This is when you actually incorporate your business as with an LLC or a limited company or an S Corp, something like that. In this case, of course, you would sign up for an Amazon seller account under the company name. But those are the only two entities and which you choose or even if you have the ability to be able to choose between those actually comes down to Amazon acceptance. And each Amazon marketplace has a list of countries. These are accepted countries for entities, that's individuals or companies, signing up for accounts in that marketplace. For example, this is the list of accepted countries for the North American marketplace. And so any individual or company, an entity, registered within these countries can sign up to sell on Amazon North America. And this one is the list of countries for Europe, which is a little bit different to North America. They're very similar, but there are slight differences. So you do want to check for whichever marketplace you're signing up for. I'm not going to go through all of these. I'm going to drop a link to each accepted list below. So the thing is that if you live in an Amazon accepted country for that marketplace, then you have the option to sign up as an individual, as yourself. Or, of course, you could also set up a company and sign up with that. But if you don't live in an Amazon accepted country, then you do not have the option to sign up as yourself, as an individual, because you yourself are not an entity in an accepted country. You don't live in one. Therefore, you would have to set up a company, another entity, in an Amazon accepted country and sign up for your account using that. And there's a ton of incorporation services which will help you do just that. For example, there's one called Klemta that will help you set up a US LLC and US bank account. Or there's Osome that will help you set up a UK limited company and UK business bank account. I'll link those below. Also, if that is your situation, I highly recommend that you watch this video in tandem with this one. That will give you the ultimate setup for selling on Amazon this year. Also goes into bank accounts, online bank accounts and saving a lot on currency conversion. So definitely recommend that if that's your situation. But that is step one and an absolute requirement. You do have to have an Amazon accepted entity. Now that you know what your entity is going to be, we can move on to step two, which is to prepare for the nine stages of sign up. And during sign up, there are nine stages. Number one is to input your business information. Then you can input primary contact person info, input your billing info, then set up your store, verify that primary contact info, then provide additional docs, schedule a meeting with Amazon, input your postcard OTP and complete the tax interview. Now, the best way to sign up is actually to get your documents ready first. And in this way, prepare two sets of details. One is for the business information section and two is for the primary contact person information. So let's quickly break down each. Business information is a section about the entity that owns this account. So it could be again you or your company. Primary contact information though is about a person. It's the person sort of in charge of this account. The person Amazon should contact 
about this account. And it is vital that you view those two sets of information separately and you do not mix and match details between them. This is where I see sellers make the most mistakes. This is exactly what leads to the most holdups, lengthy verifications and unsuccessful attempts at signing up. So please try and compartmentalize these. You've got your business info, business stuff here, and primary contact person info here. And they're often quite different. The primary contact can be you or someone you designate, but they're going to need to have ID in an Amazon accepted country. Also an address, a verifiable address in that Amazon accepted country, often verifiable through something like a bank account statement in that country. Now, if your business is owned by you, it's just you personally, you don't have a company, corporation, you're just signing up as an individual, then you can also be the primary contact. And very often in these cases, the business information matches very closely to the primary contact person information because you are both individuals. But business information and primary contact information do not have to match. Especially if you have a company, then these are going to be quite different. So let's start with the business information details and how to get this together. One of the big things I found when helping sellers move through these problems of signing up is that the business information should match geographically. For example, let's say you have a US LLC, then that should have a US registered address, US business bank account, US phone number. And I want you to try think of that as level one, the most important level, because there's cases where Amazon also, in addition on top level two, wants you to have a local return address. So for example, this US LLC might sell in the UK and Amazon wants them to have a local UK return address. And they may also want a UK local phone number. Although this is all for a US LLC, those are level two, the local return address, local phone number. That's level two, that's not what we're putting in during sign up. So to make your sign up as easy as possible, here is what you wanna do. You wanna get the following together. The document confirming the existence of your business. So this is very often a certificate of incorporation for corporations. It's often a certificate of formation for LLCs. And those running as individuals obviously will not have them. Some sole proprietors will have this. It really depends where your sole proprietorship is. But whatever document confirms the existence of your business, you want to get that. Secondly, you want to get your business's bank account statement. This is the bank account you're linking to Seller Central so that your payouts, your disbursements can be dispersed to it. So whatever that bank account is, whether it's your own as an individual or your company's for your corporation, you want to get that bank account statement. Side note here, this can also be a letter of ownership. If you're using a service like World First Payoneer, OFX, Air Wallex, it can be a letter of ownership from them. Cool, so let's say this is your certificate of incorporation and this is your bank account statement. Now what you wanna do is two things. Number one, you wanna look at both of these and confirm that the business's name and business's address is the same across both. And if you have these digitally, that's even better because the next step is to now copy the business's name exactly. Any formatting, commas, the business's address, the same, exactly, including the formatting. You're gonna save both of those, business name, business address, somewhere safe and name that business information. Lastly, add your business's phone number to that list. Remember that phone number is going to geographically match where your business is based or where your company is registered. Now that list represents the only business address, business name and business phone number that you're going to input into the business information section during sign up. And the reason this is so important is because the business's name and address must match when you type it in during sign up on the company's bank account and bank account statement, which we have here, or letter of ownership, on the certificate of incorporation, which we have here, and in a few other areas which aren't as important right now. So I don't want you to focus too much on those. But when you do gain an EIN, if you do, make sure you're using the exact same details. When you open a GS1 account to gain your UPC codes, which I do recommend you actually do after 
setting up your Seller Central account. Again, you want to make sure these details match. But the first four here are key. So what we've done is reverse engineered because we know we're going to probably upload certificates of incorporation or bank account statements. So working backwards from there, we ensure everything is going to match perfectly for the end verification. Great. So now you have your business information ready and we are going to get into sign up soon. But I promise you these steps are going to make all the difference. Let's look at how we can reverse engineer the primary contact information, the second set. Now primary contact info should also match geographically. So let's say that your primary contact is British. It might be you, it might be someone you designate, but they're British and they live in the UK. Then even if you're running a US LLC and selling in the US, the primary contact who is British should have a UK issued ID a UK personal address, a UK personal bank account or credit card with the verifiable statement for either, as well as a UK phone number. And this represents a pretty common scenario where you have a US LLC, which should have all US details, business information, and you have a primary contact in a different country, let's say UK, where all the primary contact details should be British. But mixing those two becomes quite easy during sign up and we have to keep those separate. So now you want to get the following together for your primary contact, their ID document. This is going to be a passport or driver's license and the personal bank account statement or credit card statement for this individual. If you have the choice, I prefer the personal bank account statement. Whichever you choose, though, it must be in the primary contact person's name and under their address. So let's say you have their driver's license and their personal bank account statement here. Again, you want to do two things here. First of all, confirm the primary contact name and address is the same across both if applicable. Addresses aren't always going to be on all ID documents. Next, you want to copy the primary contact name and address exactly. Again, including all formatting and you want to save this to a new document and you want to call that primary contact information. Once again, just add your primary contact phone number to that list as well. Now, this is the only primary contact name address and phone number that you can insert during the primary contact information section. The reasons for this? Well, the address of the primary contact person should match when you type it in during sign up, but also on the additional document, which is a personal bank account statement or credit card statement. And you can upload that at the end to verify their address. And the name of the primary contact person must match when you type it in and on the primary contact person's ID, driver's license or passport. And since we have those in front of us and that information saved, we can ensure that verification will be easy. So you now have two perfectly matching sets of details for one, the business information and the second set for the primary contact person info. All the boring stuff done. Let's begin the sign up. There are two types of accounts you can sign up for. One is an individual seller account. With this one, you don't pay a monthly subscription fee, but you pay a 99 cents closing fee. You pay that per item you sell. Or there is a professional seller account. Here you are going to pay a subscription, 39.99 per month, but no closing fee. So of course, once you're selling 40 units or more, that is actually more cost effective. I also recommend the professional one because you're going to gain additional features inside Seller Central. Now there's two really easy ways to sign up. First of all, you could just type in sell.amazon.com. The other way is to head over to your Amazon marketplace where you wish to sell. Scroll to the very bottom and then under make money with us, you can click sell products on Amazon. This will take you to that same page. Then you simply want to click sign up. On the login, skip the first fields. You're going to come to this gray button, create your Amazon account. Click this. Then you're going to enter your name, email and password twice. Click next. You're then going to have to verify that email address. So you're going to see an enter OTP box. Head over to your email. In your email, look for verify your new Amazon account. That's going to be the subject line and you want to copy the OTP from here. Back on this page, you're going to enter OTP. If you don't get that OTP, you can resend it at the bottom here. But once that's in, click create your Amazon account. The next page is really an introduction and Amazon tells you what to expect and what you're going to need. But once you're all good with this, click begin. 
The process begins with business information and we have to choose business location here from this drop down. So choose the location of your business. If you have a company, it's where your company is registered. If you do not have a company, it's where you're based, your country of residence. Once you've done that, you'll see this new field, business type. Now, if it's just you, you set up nothing, you're just an individual, you're going to click none, I am an individual. And you're going to enter your first, middle and last name here exactly as per your ID. If you've registered as a sole proprietor and that has like a separate name to it, you're going to select that and you can see you have to input your business's name. Lastly, of course, if you set up a company or a corporation, you're going to choose privately owned business. And under business name, this is the first time we're going to use our list of business information. You're going to insert your exact company name as you have it there because you know that's verifiable on your certificate of incorporation or your bank account statement. Double check that, then click the confirm box here and agree and continue. At the top, you can see the five main sections we're going to be moving through here and we're currently still on business info. Now we are going to complete this process with a company sign up, but the sign up for individual sole proprietors is very similar, if not simpler. In this case, we do have to enter a company registration number. This is going to be the number on your certificate of incorporation or formation. Then the registered business address again from your list of business info. We're going to insert the exact registered business address, exact same formatting, because we know when we upload that document, that business bank account statement, for example, that's going to verify our input here. We need to receive a PIN. So select SMS or call, then drop in your phone number for verification here. You can see that this is geographically the same as where the company is registered. So whichever number that is for your company or business, drop that in here. You're going to enter the capture terms and then send SMS. You'll see a one time pin pop up like this. Once that pin comes through, drop it in here and click verify. Double check all these details because you cannot come back to this step during the sign up process. Once you click next, that's it. So once you're ready, click next. This moves us to the seller information section, which is our primary contact person information set. You can insert the first, middle and last name of your primary contact person again from our detail set for primary contact information exactly as per their ID. Then you need to select the country of citizenship for your primary contact. Again, that can be you or someone you designate, but it can only be from these countries. I'm just slowly going to scroll through these. You can pause and check just to make sure of, you know, which countries are going to work here. You also need to select a country of birth. Again, I'll scroll through a lot of these just so you get an idea, but I think it's quite similar. Then insert their date of birth. Make sure you do this correctly. Day, month, year. Identity proof. Here you're going to choose how you're going to verify the details that you've input. So is that going to be with the primary contacts, national ID, passport or driver's license? Again, you want to choose the one which you worked from in the beginning. Then select the country of issue for that ID. In this case, we're going to just use a driving license as an example, as I used in the beginning. We would input the driving license number here, but if using a passport would be passport number here, and then the date of expiry. Then here we're going to insert the residential address for our primary contact person. We're getting it from our primary contact detail list and we're going to insert it exactly here as we can find on their personal credit card statements or personal bank account statement. This will verify their address. The bottom confirm if the primary contact person is a beneficial owner or a legal representative of the business. Then select if you have added all the beneficial owners of the business, confirm and then click next. The next page here just prepares you for the billing section and they let you know what you're going to need. So you are going to need a valid bank account number here. This again is the bank account which your Amazon payouts is going to go to. So it is your business's bank account. That bank account should either be in your primary contact's name, which is most likely going to be the case if it's just you signing up yourself, individual, no company. It's going to be you as the primary contact and of 
course probably your bank account personally or in your business's name so if you're a sole proprietor with like a separate entity to yourself somehow different name the bank account's going to need to be in that sole proprietorship's name if you have an llc or a limited company s corp this business bank account's going to need to be in that llc s corp limited company's name and to verify that bank account, you're either going to need your online banking credentials, which is usually the best way you actually verify during sign up here or to provide Amazon with a bank account statement. Definitely recommend you just have both of those ready and you need a valid credit card number, which you can insert. This is what you're going to pay your monthly fee with your $39.99 for your seller account. Side note is that it is best if the credit card is under your company's name or your primary contact's name, but it does not have to be. As long as it's a chargeable credit card from the major credit card providers, then that should work fine. But once you're happy here, click continue. At the top here, you can see it says you're adding a bank account for the US marketplace. But once you're in and registered, you can add additional bank accounts for other marketplaces. And when adding this bank account, the first question is what is the bank account holder's name? Is it going to be our primary contact? That's Captain Jack Sparrow or our company. Now, in this case, we've signed up with a company. It's definitely going to be the company's name on that business bank account. So we're going to select that. Financial institution name, this is going to list a whole lot of banks and financial institutions. You want to find the one under which your bank account is set up. It was also surprising to see Air Wallex, OFX, World First, all of these being shown here, which does make it easier to sign up for those signing up from abroad. In the country box, you are selecting where your bank account is based. So if, for example, it's in the US, you would then enter a nine digit routing number, then the bank account number twice. If it's, for example, in the UK, you're rather going to be entering a sort code and then the bank account number twice. You can see here that if you're signing up, for example, in the US, but with a UK bank account, that is going to go through the Amazon currency converter, which is not good because you're going to lose out on, on some uh, currency conversion. So definitely check out that setup video if you do want to transfer your currency in the best way possible. But once you're happy here, you're going to accept the terms and then click verify bank account. Generally, Amazon uses TrueLayer and you can see they're telling you here they're going to redirect you to TrueLayer. That is what Amazon uses to securely connect to your bank account and verify it. So once you're good with all of this, you're going to click I understand. On the next page here, you're going to search for and choose your bank. Then you need to provide TrueLayer permission to access your account data. Click allow. At this point, you'll be directed to your business bank account portal and you're going to log in. This is going to allow TrueLayer to actually verify your bank account. Now, once this occurs, once this processes, you're actually going to be signed out of the sign up process. So you're going to need to sign in using the Amazon account password you set up. On the next page, you can insert a mobile number here and add a mobile number to enhance the account security, or you can just click not now. This will take you back to the billing screen where you're going to see the bank account is now linked. Then click continue. On the next page, you can insert your credit card details to pay for your monthly plan. Amazon also explains exactly how and when you'll be charged. Below that box, you're going to add your credit or debit card details. The one thing I do want to say at this point, one of the methods by which you may verify your primary contact at the end is through a credit card statement. So I would just be very careful here if you're using the primary contact person's credit card, which might even be your credit card. If you're verifying the primary contact at the end with a credit card statement, make sure what you insert here for the credit card that's paying your monthly fee matches exactly. Or the safest way is just do not use a credit card statement at the end in order to verify your primary contact person. So just be careful with it, but drop in your credit card number, date of expiry, the cardholder name, the billing address, and then you can click next. And that completes the billing section. Now we move on to the store. Here we can insert our store and product info. First of all, store name. This is one people get hung up on, but it's often best said as your brand name. Now, if you're doing private label, that's quite easy because you're putting a brand name on your products. You're often trademarking that name. That makes sense as the store name, like Nike products with Nike on them sold under the Nike store. However, if you're doing wholesale or arbitrage, something different, 
then of course you could also just put in your company's name here. But this is going to be the name customers see when visiting your store or buying from your listings. Side note here is that store names can only be taken once. So if your brand name is available as a store name, it's worth grabbing. They're also case sensitive, meaning if you cannot get your brand name in lowercase, you can try uppercase. Once you've dropped that in beneath that store name, you've got to answer a couple of questions and these do change from time to time. Do you have universal product codes, UPCs for all of your products? Here you're going to select yes if you do. If you're doing private label, I highly recommend this. Next, are you the manufacturer or brand owner for any of the products you want to sell on Amazon? Here, if you're doing private label, you're definitely going to select yes because you are the brand owner and you're seen as the manufacturer in a way. If you're doing wholesale arbitrage, of course, you're going to answer in line with that. Next, do you own government registered trademarks for the branded products you want to sell on Amazon? So if you already have a trademark for your private label brand, you're going to answer yes. If you don't, you're going to answer no. And if you have for some products, not others, maybe doing a mix of business models, then you're going to answer some of them. Once this is in, you're going to click next. This brings us to the last of the five overall phases, which is called verification and which I'm going to rename primary contact verification. So here you're going to review your primary contact details, make sure those are the same as your documents. Then you're going to upload the identity document, which you actually selected earlier, we did select a driver's license in the beginning of this. Here it is, passports, the last time I did this. But whichever you've chosen, you're simply going to upload that ID document here. That is going to verify our primary contact person's information, which we know is correct already because we worked from these ID documents in the beginning. Now, if you're uploading a passport, it must be a scan of the page with your image on it and the page above and it must be signed and if you're uploading a driver's license you do have to upload both sides of it which i'm going to get into here with our pro tips for uploading the id the id docs must be high resolution and that's why scanned documents are much better than pictures they must be government issued and distributed by the country where the individual is a citizen or resident show the full document or both sides of an id card with an inch of space around the document on all sides. They also must be in color, not black and white. And for things like ID cards, driver's license, they must be merged into one file for uploading. It's because remember, we need an image of the front and back. There's no way to upload multiple documents here. So you're going to have to fuse them into one before uploading. So that verifies the identity of our primary contact person. Next, we actually need to verify their residential address. To do this, Amazon asks for an additional document, as you see here. It can be a bank account statement or credit card statement in this case. So you're going to choose a document type from your drop down here. Then you're going to upload that document by clicking upload additional document. And again here, the name and address we've input for our primary contact person during sign up is going to match this additional document because we worked from it in the beginning. But once you've taken a look over this, you're happy, you can click submit. You're then going to need to schedule a meeting with Amazon. They often give you three options for verifying your identity, but in this case, you can see there's only one over a live video call. So we're going to have to select that and then click next. You're then going to see a page where you can actually book a call with an Amazon representative. So you're going to select a certain time, day, and then click next. You're then going to see a page like this where it's going to outline what you need to know about that call and before that call. Then check the recording notice box here and click next. You're then going to see this video call verification page. You also will receive emails in terms of that video call. Lastly, we need to enter the postcard OTP. Now, in many cases, Amazon's actually going to send you an OTP in the mail to the address you've put on this account. Now, once you physically receive that OTP in the mail, you're going to log back into Seller Central here, drop that into the enter OTP box and click submit. That concludes the five overall sections. However, there is also a tax interview and a lot of people get hung up on this. So I do want to cover it quickly. 
Apologies for the bad quality screenshots here, it was difficult to get. But Amazon is going to ask you to go through this tax interview in some form or another. Now, it's basically a simple W-9 or W-8 type form. Generally, W-9 is for US-based sellers and W-8 is for non-US based sellers. But when you're ready, you're going to start the tax interview. The first question here is what is your tax classification? Now, the tax interview has one purpose. It is to establish the tax residency of the entity receiving income from this business receiving the income at the end of the day from this business but the simplest way to look at this what is your tax classification if the income from this business is reported on your personal tax return you're going to select individual if that income is reported on your company's tax return you're going to select business for example, if you're a sole proprietor or even if you own a single member US LLC, which is in most cases a pass through vehicle, it's still reported as personal income. You're going to select individual and you're going to insert your personal full name, country of citizenship and permanent address. If you're running a corporation, you're going to select business. You're going to insert your company's full name, country of incorporation, where that company is registered and permanent address that's the registered address of this company now if you're an individual as per the tax classification then for the country of citizenship here you want to enter this as follows if you're a citizen and resident in one country you're going to enter your country of citizenship if you're a dual citizen enter the country where you're a citizen and resident when completing this and if you're not a resident in any country where you have citizenship right now then enter the country where you were most recently a resident. You must also answer yes or no as to whether you are a US citizen, resident, green card holder or any of those similar things. And that concludes the process. Then verification begins. Now Amazon usually reviews your application within 10 days but it can take longer in Q4. If you don't hear from Amazon in that time frame then you can log into Seller Central. You're going to head to the help icon at the top and you're going to contact them and request an account status update. I also recommend you monitor your email because Amazon may well ask for additional documentation. I also recommend you upload those additional documents within 30 days. Otherwise, the case closes. You have to restart the entire sign up process. And if it is not asked for, do not provide it. It may seem like a good idea, but it often just confuses the process. Finally, if you're still having verification issues, a couple last things to check. All uploaded docs should be less than 10 megabytes in size, be in one of these supported formats and also in one of these supported languages. And I recommend patience with this. It might take a couple of weeks back and forth with Amazon until you get your final verification. That's exactly how you can sign up for your own Amazon seller account. I do have a couple last notes for you. One, every resource I've mentioned is linked below. Two, there are two additional videos I recommend you watch in tandem with this. One's on choosing your marketplace and the other, even more important in my opinion, is how to create the optimal setup for FBA, particularly if you're setting up in multiple countries or between countries and you also want to optimize currency conversion. Three, if you need any specific tools or services for your business going forward, you can often save on those massively using our partnered links you can also search all of them in our toolbox. But this is just the first step of your selling journey. So make sure you do subscribe notifications on so you don't miss the next steps. And it just started pouring. But if you did find this valuable, please smash like. Wishing you a successful verification, many, many sales, and I'll catch you in the next video.